Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Positively Carly. I'm sorry, I'm going to adjust my mirror. It's very tacky, but that's okay. I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, welcome to my unmade bed. <laughs> I always make these videos like right when I'm like getting ready. As you can see, my hair is still not completely dry, but you know, it is what it is. It's At least it's clean, you know? At least it's clean. Um, so I wanted to do this video today. I wanted to talk about um, medicating uh, autism, so to speak. Um, my son is, I've talked about my son before. He's 16 years old. He's on the spectrum. He's like moderately functioning person with autism. Like he's, he's very, um, he is verbal. He just, you know, he has issues with, um, excuse me, of, with expressive language. Also, <laughs> here we're talking to the computer. Um, also he's very, um, He's very creative and he's very smart and he um, has issues with enunciation and diction so his speech is a little difficult to understand sometimes so you really have to kind of, um, for me and my husband it's not that hard just because we've been around it for 16 years so we know but at the same time if you're not used to it you don't really know, you don't really know what he's saying but he's, he's really smart and he's really funny but um, I wanted to talk today about medications that we do give give him on a regular basis and ones that we don't give him on a regular basis. So currently, right now, he um, is prescribed three medications. Um, he takes Intuniv, which is an ADHD medication, which has really helped with his, um, with, with his attention span. And he also takes Prozac to help with his anxiety. He is on a um, medication to calm him down when he's having a, a meltdown, and I give him melatonin. Um, he's not prescribed that, but it was suggest. I mean, I give him melatonin so that he sleeps at night. I mean, I will say this about the melatonin: it doesn't always work. Like there's, there's like a magic time when you can give it to him. Like he has to be starting to get tired. Like probably. We give it to him between 8.30 and 9 o'clock at night. My theory is, is that if I can get him to sleep by 10 or 10.30, even 11, it's like if I can get him to have at least like a six hour span of sleep, that's great. It doesn't always work. Like last night it didn't work. Like I, I gave him his melatonin at 9 o'clock. He actually did fall asleep, but at 3.30 he woke up this morning, used the bathroom and said, hey mom, I need to change my sheets. <laughs> I don't know why. They were, I'm like, and sometimes, you know, he does have, he does battle a little bit with wetting the bed, but it isn't because he doesn't know how to use the bathroom. It's just that it's a whole thing with the, the circadian rhythm and the sleep and then, you know, getting up and like, just, you know, it's, it's difficult. I mean, it's very hard for him. And so it's like, I get, I don't get angry that it happens. I just get angry that it happens in the middle of the night when I too am trying to sleep. So it's been a challenge, but, um, let me tell you how we got to these, to where we are with the medications. So when he was in middle school, he was just having, he was just having like really, uh, like probably like his sixth, sixth grade year. Now that is the first year where we live. That is the first year of junior high. And he was just having a really hard time transitioning, paying, like his attention span wasn't great. So we were just having issues with that. So um, I took him to his pediatrician and um, I was really blessed. The, his pediatrician that he goes to is really, really great. She's very autism friendly. She, and she has a real interest in autism. So I, like, I won't, like she, she lives, she lives. Her office is all the way, it's an hour away from where we live, but I refuse to take him to any other pediatrician until he's 21 and he ages out of that because I'm like, mm -mm. she's, she's amazing. She helps us so much. I'm not even gonna just forget it. I will, I will take the day off and I will take him to his doctor's appointment. It's like, it's worth the cut. I don't care. So, um, so she's great, but she prescribed Intuna for him because he was having difficulties like paying attention and his attention span wasn't great. And it was funny because like anything, anything else, he was completely, completely down for, except when it came to school. And he was just having transition issues on top of everything else. Now, fast forward to eighth grade year, and he is having 
high levels of anxiety. I mean, very bad. And the only way that he is able to kind of control that or just kind of combat that is through being through a lot of self-stimulation. And when you're 13 and you have hormones, you all can figure out what I'm trying to say. And he would be doing it in class and it was awful. So I went back to, went back to my, um, actually, no, what I did was that I actually did a, um, a, uh, an appointment with a psychiatrist, but she was real, that was just a bad situation. I don't, she didn't really know what I was talking about, which I thought was weird. I was like, you know, he's got really bad anxiety. I feel like he could, he could, you know, really be successful if we put him on like some sort of antidepressant. And those are, these are the words that I'm saying to her. And she's like, I don't really know what you want from me. I'm like, I just told you what I want. Idiot. So <laughs> that same day, praise the Lord, we had another, we had an appointment with um, his pediatrician and she was like, mm, it sounds like he could, you know, he could really use an anti, an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety med. Why don't we try putting him on Prozac? And I was like, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what I wanted. And she goes, yeah, we'll put him on a low dose of Prozac. We'll see how that goes. And if, you know, we can always adjust it. Sorry, I have a snorgly. I still have a snorgly. Ah, snorglies. Um, and if it doesn't work out, we can adjust it based on, based on how he's doing. Now, we raised his dosage. Like, she gave him, like, the lowest dose possible in the very beginning. And when he went into high school, his freshman year of high school, we changed, we just upped the dosage a little bit. Now he's been on that same dosage for the last three years, because he's going to be a junior in high school this year. Holy crap. Um, so we changed the dosage, but he's still on those two medications daily. So he takes those every single day. Um, so last year, was it last year? I think it was the beginning of the school. No, it was the beginning of the school year last year. So it's been, no. No, no, no. I had to take him in for a med check that this is what happened. It happened back in April. And we were, I was talking to his pediatrician and we were, we were talking about everything. And I said, you know, one of the things that's really just kind of a challenge now is that when he has a meltdown, now for all, all of you that know what an autism meltdown looks like, you are going to understand why we put him on medication for this. Now, for those of you don't, that don't know what an autism meltdown looks like, it is when, specifically for my child, he gets very upset. He can't, he can't verbalize what's wrong. And he just starts, he is humming really hard. Like when I say he's humming really hard, it's like one of those, he's in pain. It, like, it sounds like he's in pain serious emotional and physical pain like he's like like you know how when you cut yourself accidentally or sprain your ankle and you're just like <clears throat> like that kind of pain like that's what he sounds like and then when that is going on he's also simultaneously hitting himself in the head like he will hit himself very hard like this just because his it's like, I honestly can attribute it, like when I ask him how it feels, he can never really explain it to me, but what it looks like is that it looks like his brain is on fire and he can't, he can't talk, he can't verbalize. It's like, if you can, like in the very beginning, like if you can get to it, get to him, like right when it starts, you can almost get him to talk about it, which is great. Um, but there are days where it just does not work. It just doesn't work. And when those days come, that's when we give him a medication for meltdowns. I don't give it to him all the time. I try, me and my husband are very adamant about trying very, very hard not to give it to him because we want him to work through his own emotions and his own issues. And we want him to be very, we want him to be more aware of what, what is causing it. We want him to like use his words and tell us what's happening. So, um, so that's what we do. That's what we do with that. So he's, a. Uh, he's very, um, he's very aware of medication. And so we were talking about it yesterday. Like he was like starting to have a meltdown and I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do this with you today. I was like, I need you to tell me what's wrong. And he was like, nothing's wrong. I'm calm. I was like, no, 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 no. I can tell you're getting upset because you're not getting your way. So 
what can we do to combat that? And he finally was just like, okay, you're right. I'm upset because I'm not getting my way. So that's what happened. And I have to be very, very happy about that because me and my uh, husband don't, don't, it doesn't always work out that way. Sorry, I had to do a time check. I wasn't really sure what time it was because I actually do have to start getting dressed here in a little bit, but I want to do this video. You know, I just wanted to help all my autism mamas out there. As you know, I believe in, you know, if you're going, if you have a situation that's going to help anybody, great. So that's what's happening right now. And his, um, his sitter is going to get here in probably about 20 minutes or so. So I should probably, I should probably get off and get dressed, but I don't want to. <laughs> but, um, so the medication we give him for his meltdowns is Risper, Risperdol, Risperdrill, Risperdol. It's whisper something, but like I said, our doctor, his pediatrician gave it to us in April and it is now August, almost September. So we've had it for what, four months and we don't give it to him all the time, like at all. So it's really, it's really a, um, it's really like a last resort situation. It really is. And so we also have to, we also kind of have to prepare ourselves like when we go on trips, so we always bring some with us just because. <sighs> the unfortunate thing about autism, especially, but I think this might be even across the board for anybody that's on the spectrum. If you don't prepare them for what is happening, then you need to prepare yourself for what will happen. So like if you don't tell your child, oh, hey, today we're going to do this activity, go here, do this, 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 and this. And if you don't tell them that, then you're setting yourself up for failure. And by failure, I mean you're probably risking having not a, an okay situation. Like, like when we, like case in point, we took our son to um, an adaptive uh, water sports act, um, event two weekends ago. And, you know, we told him, I mean, he'd been to it before, but you always have to, like, remind, we're like, listen there are going to be lines and there we have to sign up for things and it might not be at the time that you want to do it but this is what is this is what is going to happen so he was like yeah i'm totally fine with that i'll be on my best behavior it's going to be awesome we're like okay so of course we get there and we can't sign up for any of the activities he wants to do until after lunch and he's very upset about it and then he started melting down and we were like okay i was like we can't do this today so we had to give him we had to give him a pill we had to um, and once, once that took effect, he was real chill. He was super awesome. He had a great time and every, everything worked out, but it's like in those situations, like you have to prepare, you really have to prepare yourself for the un, the unforeseen circumstances. So I just say, you know, prepare yourself as best you can, but, and bear in mind that these are medications that me, that my husband and I talked about. For the longest time, I will admit, I was anti-medication for my child with autism because I was like, well, what else? What else is going to go wrong? I mean, I mean, I don't, okay, that might have sounded glib, but that's not what I mean. It's just like, ugh, another thing we have to worry about. But the truth of the matter is that all the medications that he's been on have all really been, have all really done really, really, really well. He's done really well on, and it's really helped, it's really helped him have a better I think quality of life to like to a degree it's like he's more functional he's able to pay attention more he's able to like hold down a longer conversation um so that's where that's that's where I am I'm like I'm very happy with what it's doing for him and I just hope that it continues I mean there's always going to be adjustments somewhere down the road but that's where we are now right now everything's okay and he's going to be, he's a junior in high school now. <laughs> I'm freaking out still. I can't believe it. Anyway, all right. That's it for me and my unmade bed. So um, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, thumbs up, like, and share. Um, peace out, my friends. I will see you in the next one. Love yourselves, love each other. Bye.